are discussing DC DC converters, uh, in other words lossless ways of uh, transforming DC voltages and we have one of the topologies which is to generate an average voltage smaller than the input voltage using a pair of switches. Then you get a rectangular waveform here whose average is alpha times V s where alpha is the duty cycle of the switch s and using a lossless L c low pass filter to filter out the rectangular waveform into a DC and this is the load R L. So, the waveform S looks like this, where this is alpha times the period and this is the period and S bar is just the complement of this. The voltage here, if I call that V S hat that has exactly the same shape, it is equal to V s for a duration alpha T s and equal to 0 for the remaining period and if you look at the output V o, what will it be? It will be almost a DC which is equal to alpha V s, but it will have some ripple around it and we will later calculate if we have time the ripple will look something like this. Okay. So, so there will be a small ripple. Now, for this to work properly for the output to look like D C, what is the condition? We want a DC source at the output, we want it to be almost D C. We know that we will have some fluctuations because the input is periodic, input to the filter is periodic, the output will be periodic at the same frequency. That is okay as long as the peak to peak value of the periodic part is very small. So, what is the condition for that to happen? Huh? Yeah. So, you want to have the cutoff frequency of the low pass filter, the low pass filter will have a magnitude response with when I say low pass filter it is between this input and that output. Okay. It has a DC gain of 1 and it will typically have some peaking depending on the quality factor. What is the quality factor of this? What did we say it was? You evaluated the transfer function right? R L square root C by L. Okay. Now, there are uh, uh, L C circuits in which the quality factor expression comes out to be 1 over R square root L by C and there are others where it comes out to be R root C by L. Okay. What kind of circuits are these? Like why do you get uh, series and parallel. Okay. So, now when you derive an expression what kind of sanity check will you use? R L equals 0 for this circuit. The sanity check, what kind of sanity check will you use? Okay, for this I got it to be R L square root C by L. Okay. So, is there some sanity check I can use to verify that it is correct? Yeah, you have to look for the value of R L which will turn it into an undamped L C circuit. Okay, in this case, if you make R L equals infinity, that goes away. You simply have L and C. Okay, so then what should the quality factor be? Infinite. Okay. Similarly, if you have a series R L C, the series R L C of course is easy, but I mean it can be in different forms. The input can be shown somewhere and the output can be elsewhere. Case of series R L C, if you short the R, 
you will have just L and C in a loop and then uh, you will again you will have an ideal LC circuit with Q of infinity. So, that is a sanity check that you can use. Now, this will have some peaking and eventually it will fall off as minus 40 dB per decade. Okay. So, that is the transfer function of the LC circuit by itself between the marked puts, input and output. Now, clearly uh, the input has the average value plus this periodic signal with 0 average. Okay. You can always decompose it like that. If you want it in terms of Fourier series, you can think of the DC part and the sum of every other term and what will that be? It will just be this minus the average, right. So, basically it will be this waveform where this area equals that area that is 0. Okay. So, if you look at the error compared to DC that is it. So, that will by definition of 0 average. So, it has uh, harmonics at uh, f s 1 over t s and mul integer multiples of it. So, clearly this peaking occurs somewhere around omega n. So, this means that the, the for this to get attenuated for these uh, uh, periodic components to be attenuated f s should be somewhere over there. Okay. So, f s should be much greater than this is the omega axis. So, I should write omega s. So, f s should be much greater than 1 over 2 pi square root l c. Okay. So, in that case the ripple will get uh, well filtered out and you will have nearly DC output. Is this okay? So now we have to take the next step and turn this into a closed loop system where you can get an accurately defined output. Okay. is V o. Now, we know that V o is alpha times V s. Now, there can be all kinds of errors here. First of all, the V s value may be uncertain because the battery may be in a different state of uh, charge than what you think it is and alpha itself may be somewhat inaccurate. You try to set it accurately, but it may not be exact. Okay. And uh, also, you may want different values of V naught. Okay. So, as we by now well know if you want to set something accurately we have to use negative feedback and the knob that we have to control the output voltage is this duty cycle alpha. Okay. So, if we find that the output is smaller than what I want I increase the duty cycle increase the on period of the clock and if it is uh, smaller than uh, what I if I it is uh, higher than what I want then I reduce the duty cycle. Okay. So, let us imagine that there is a waveform generator what it does is the following somehow or the other it knows the switching frequency f s we will see how to implement this and it also gets the duty cycle input alpha. So, given these two what it gives out here is a signal a rectangular uh, logic signal at a frequency f s and with a duty cycle alpha. Okay. So, and this alpha is what has to be controlled is this okay? So, we have to compare the output 
to something and put some circuit here. For now, I will call it the controller that is the common terminology that is used which will generate alpha and of course, uh, the whole negative feedback system should be stable okay? because we know that negative feedback systems have the potential to become unstable. Right? So, we have to make sure that it is stable. Now, before we go there, what we need is a model that uh, gives you the behavior between this duty cycle alpha and the output V naught. Is this okay? Because this is the power source V s, but as far as the negative feedback loop is concerned, the input is here, the controller output is here, and the output of the circuit is there. So, that is where the loop is. Uh, that is how the loop is closed, right. So, that means that I need some sort of uh, transfer function from this alpha to the output, okay. Because uh, after all, what is it that uh, we need to ensure that the negative feedback loop is stable? How do we ensure that the negative feedback loop is stable? What is that? Yeah, you have to somehow evaluate the loop gain and loop gain, where is the loop now? The loop is this way right. So, you need to know the gain from here to there, so that you can put an appropriate controller, so that you can design the loop gain for it to be stable. Is this okay? So, now the question is what is the model of this whole thing? That is in particular the model from alpha to V o. Okay. I mean this whole thing looks very messy, because we have time varying components in here and then some waveform generator here, but we know what this does in that although we do not know what is inside, we know how the output will be uh, for a given alpha. Okay. So, essentially we need the transfer function from alpha to V naught. How would we go about determining this? Hmm? What should we do? If I gave you any block, okay, so this is the input, that is the output. I asked you to determine the transfer function, what will you do? Let us say we do this in the lab. What is Yeah, one possibility is we apply uh, sinusoidal inputs and go on changing the frequency and look at the look at how the uh, adhesive frequency you look at the change in the magnitude and the change in phase. Okay. So, that gives you the transfer function magnitude and phase, right. Can we use that here? I mean, everything can in principle be used, but remember now what we have to do is this alpha must be a sinusoid. So, that means, what will this waveform look like? What will it look like? So, the pulses will get wider and wider and then narrower and narrower. Okay, I am not showing it corresponding to a sinusoid, but you understand. I mean, you have a periodic signal in that, uh, the period is always T s but the on period goes on changing as a sinusoid. Okay. So, clearly this you feel is kind of difficult to analyze right? and then you have to do this at every frequency and then figure out what happens, is not it. I mean there are some techniques that are that work well with some circuits and some others that work with other circuits and so on. So, in this case this looks too messy, because uh, you have to first of all have this rectangular signal whose widths are varying like uh, if I plot this to scale, if this is the sinusoid I am thinking about, then maybe at this point the pulses are like this and when it comes here the pulses are bigger and when it comes here again it is smaller and when it comes here it may be really small and so on. So, we have to calculate the response of the L c circuit to a complicated waveform like this, it is difficult. So, what other ways of uh, determining the response do you have? 
I mean the same thing I want the transfer function or some equivalent description of it what else can we do what is the transfer function huh? what is that what did you say yeah impulse oh, oh yeah so there may be other methods of determining that right what else can we determine instead of the transfer function an equivalent description what is it huh? impulse response ok fine impulse response can we do that here impulse response is fine that is a that is a correct answer because imp uh, impulse response and transfer function have a one to one relationship right the transfer function after all is the Laplace transform of the impulse response but how do you determine the impulse response hmm? yeah so maybe a more convenient thing is to determine the step response and then uh, find the uh, and find the impulse response from there and the transfer function and so on okay in fact we will not do any of that we will take some shortcuts because uh, uh, our conditions are not arbitrary but that is what we will try to do so what we will do is we will uh, uh, try to evaluate the step response and then in fact find an easier way of doing that okay without even having to go through this switching waveforms etc so these are all techniques that you can use you can make you can uh, sometimes you may be able to evaluate imp the impulse response at least approximately what is the meaning of the impulse response perhaps one way to think about it is so let us say you have an impulse here so that means that you have some duty cycle all the way up to this point and this single pulse is slightly wider and then after that it is narrower so this is equivalent to a discrete time signal whose i mean in terms of uh, for the duty cycle it is like a discrete time impulse right so i am thinking of the way i am thinking of it is the circuit is operating in steady state with some duty cycle and on top of that you apply an impulse at a particular location or a step or a sinusoid okay and of course there is no meaning to negative duty cycle so you cannot have a sinusoid with zero mean as duty cycle is this okay so now let us try to evaluate the step response of this and to make things easy what I will assume is this for alpha I will indeed step from 0 to some value okay what is the meaning of uh, zero duty cycle yeah so the switch s bar is always on and s is closed s is open right switch s bar is always this duty cycle is zero means that this has zero width this is never closed this is always closed so the circuit is operating with zero input okay now that is easy because if it is zero input and then in steady state this would be zero also okay is this fine you can consider it from any alpha to any other alpha ok you can evaluate the step response between any two values of alpha but I will start from 0 just because it is convenient this is ok now when it steps to alpha naught what is this uh, switching waveform it was not switching at all up to this point and after that it will have at duty cycle of alpha naught ok is this fine any questions no no that is what I did not so what I assumed was that uh, it was operating with a certain given value alpha 1 and then in the middle there was a step of some value ok. If alpha 1 was 0 then there would be no step and a small step and then go ok small uh, uh, pulse and then it will go off. So, many times this is what uh, actually we would not go into those uh, levels of sophistication. So, what happens is that there may be some hidden nonlinearities. that is although this part of the circuit is linear and time invariant. So, that means that when you calculate the transfer function of this alone between this input and that output 
the strength of the signal you use doesn't matter because everything scales, right? I could use one volt, one millivolt, hundred volts. In principle, it doesn't matter at all. It's a, just a matter of convenience in practice. Okay, your circuit may not be able to tolerate hundred volts, or maybe with one millivolt you may not get good enough signal, and so on. But uh, when you have this other things here, there may be some other nonlinearities, and things may be dependent on the value of alpha. Okay, so that we won't uh, get to that right now, but that's why many times, I mean, for such circuits, obviously. The response will be different if the input goes from 1 to 1.1 or 0 to 0 0.1 and so on. Okay. If it is a linear uh, time invariant system, the effect of the step will be exactly the same because you can think of it as 0 plus a 0 0.1 volt step or 1 plus a 0 0.1 volt step. The expect of 0 0.1 volt step will be the same, does not matter where you start from, but for uh, other circuits it may not be that way. Okay. So, we will see. So, I will go from uh, some alpha to uh, alpha naught. So, what happens is essentially I am analyzing now again I am back to analyzing only the linear time invariant circuit L c and R l where this input is it is 0 for some time and then it has these pulses with duty cycle alpha naught this is okay so what will be the output in this case how would you determine that how do you in general determine if you have a linear time invariant circuit and you have an expo input x of t how will you determine the output y of t what is the expression for the output huh convolution okay so i have to this is x of t and this whole thing has some impulse response h of t and I have to find x convolved with h and that is the expression for convolution. Okay. So, this also is kind of too painful like I said most of uh, the algebra we use in analog circuits is trivial if it is too complicated we try to somehow simplify it, but understand where the simplification is. So, if you really need to you can go back and fix it. Okay. Now, we need to have some idea of uh, what the impulse response of it is, what is the impulse response of the LC circuit that is I have a voltage source here. this why I think I called this V s hat to V o. So, what is the impulse response from V s hat to V o? What is that? 1 by? I cannot hear what you are saying. Yeah, that is the transfer function I wanted the impulse response. What is that? Exponential type. So, it will be a decaying exponential. What is that? It grows and grows and reaches 1 now. Impulse response, I wanted the impulse response, because you just now you said that the impulse response convolved with the input give me the gives me the output right. So, tell me what the impulse response is. That is the step response. Okay. So, what will be the impulse response? sin 1 by root L C T. What is the impulse response of a second order uh, system?
I apply a voltage impulse delta of t ok. So, now tell me what is the inductor current just after t equals 0, what is the capacitor voltage just after t equals 0. Neither one will change, okay, and that is permissible here. So, the voltage across the impulse, this one will be what? Voltage across the inductor, delta, okay. So, what will be the? If I plot the current through the inductor, what will that look like? Huh? Yeah, that's a discontinuity. What's the size of the discontinuity? what 1 by L ok and then what happens after that. So, immediately you will start to get an initial current of uh, 1 by L and that will go where into the resistor or capacitor or both initially it will go only into the capacitor right. So, what will happen to the capacitor voltage? it will start increasing ok and what is the rate of increase? What? Yeah, what is that? 1 by L. So, what happens after that? Start decreasing. Yeah, ok. So, the slope may start reducing, then what happens? Uh, yeah, actually, this also depends on whether it is critically damped or over damped or under damped or something, right. So, it can do this, or there is a possibility that it will uh, do something like that, ok. So, let us assume that it is ringing because typically that is how you end up with the values of these things ok, but anyway either way yeah which one yeah. So, you can have either this or that that depends on whether it is critically damped or under damped or over damped. Now, it is always the sum of two exponentials because you have two poles, but if it is so what is the difference does it look like I mean does this look like the sum of two exponentials. Yeah, you need to have a complex poles. In that case, you will get ringing. Otherwise, you will not have ringing, but you will have uh, some exponential and another exponential with a different time constant. Okay, and if it is critically damped, what will be the form of the response? T times exponential. Okay, so anyway, it will always start growing, and then the envelope will start decaying. Okay, so like I said, we don't want to do too many calculations. So tell me how much is. Uh, so, let us assume that the it is a ringing response it does not matter this uh, qualitative description does not depend on whether it is ringing or not. So, how much is that that half cycle of the ringing or one full cycle of the ringing. Huh? 1 by approximately what is it? What is the time interval? What is the period of the ringing? 1 by the period dimension should be correct. <laughs> the frequency of this will be 1 by the radian frequency will be 1 hour square root L c. So, the period will be 2 pi times square root L c is that ok. I mean if you have L and c then the ringing frequency will be 1 over 2 pi square root L c hertz the reciprocal of that is the frequency ok. This is approximate actually you know that uh, the complex poles this uh, the distance of the complex pole from the origin is 1 over square root L c radians per second ok. It will have some real part 
and some imaginary part. So, what comes inside the argument of the sinusoid is the imaginary part, but if the quality factor is very high, it is very close to 1 over square root L c. Okay. So, it is approximately that, it is not exactly that one. Okay. So, the real part it decides how fast it decays, uh, imaginary part decides how fast it rings. Okay. So, now what I want to do is I want to find the convolution between this and that. Okay. So, please do it. How do you do a convolution pictorially? Do you know? Huh? Okay. And then for every value of t, you offset it by some time, you integrate the product that will give you the output for some time. So, but for that, first we need to draw these two on the same scale. Okay. So, let me draw the impulse response for you. It will go on ringing like that. Okay. On the same horizontal scale, I want to sketch the pulses. How will that be? Yeah, yeah. What will that look like? Yeah. Yeah. So the pulses may look <laughs> something like this, okay, where the period of this ringing is much greater than the switching frequency sorry the switching period T s. Okay. So, that is T s. So, what how does this help us? Ah, that is correct. So, that is what we designed for right. So, that we have a small ripple. So, how does this help with the convolution? Yeah, that is the point. So, what we can do is if I let us say I zoom into the area of one pulse, the pulse may look like this, okay. This is T s, and over a period of T s, this impulse response hardly changes, okay. So, then what is the conclusion from this? So, let us consider I mean you can always think of uh, we have to flip and integrate and so on, but uh, you get the idea right. So, let me flip the signal if you want. We have to flip and integrate from minus infinity to infinity you can think of uh, you can segment it into uh, pieces of T s. Okay. Of course, we are not going to do this, but just to give you an idea. So, then I can take it as a sum of integral over every period of this. So, let us just look at one period where the input pulse is like that and h of t is hardly changing. Okay. So, over this period how did I write it? Yeah, we can write it in either way. So, h of tau this is just over this period okay it is hardly changing right so i can simply assume this to be a constant this constant will be different for each period okay so we can assume this to be a constant so it comes out of the integral so i have only x of t minus tau d tau this is okay so because we have uh, very slowly uh, very slow impulse response compared to the frequency of the input we can do this. So, what is this after all the integral or the average of the input in that period 
okay. So, all this is saying is that because the impulse response is nearly constant in each period, whether you take the actual variation in each period or the average value, you will get the same result. Okay. Is this clear? It just comes out of uh, the way you have to design the DC-DC converter. You have to design it such that the switching frequency is much higher than the natural frequency of the LC filter, otherwise you would not get much filtering. Once you do that, then what happens within each switching period? It will give you some detail in the uh, waveform, in the output, but by and large it does not matter because within each period the impulse response hardly changes. Is this okay? So, what this means is one of the approximations we could make is the input can be replaced by it average its average in each period. Okay. understand. So, this obviously makes life much simpler. In fact, this is what we did when we said that if you make the uh, natural frequency of the LC filter much smaller than the switching frequency, the output will be nearly DC, right. Because in that occasion, in that uh, condition, we were operating with a constant duty cycle. So, the average in every period was the same and equal to the desired DC value. Okay. So, now we are saying that even when the input changes, we can still make this approximation, so that you get at least a rough idea of how the output changes. Okay. Any questions about this? So, again like we have lots of approximations to make life easier, especially as far as hand calculations are concerned, but you need to understand the basis of the approximation, because if you apply one approximation in a different situation, you may get completely wrong results. Okay. Clearly, if you do this, for instance, one thing you would never be able to calculate is the ripple in the output, because the ripple in the output depends very much on how it varies within each period. Okay. So, what is the average of this within each period, the period wise average? Huh? So, up to this point the average will be 0. Okay. After that the average switches to alpha times V s, because I am assuming that the duty cycle changes from one value to another, in this case 0 to some alpha naught. Okay. So, what does it mean? This signal, the average signal is a step, so all we want is the step response of this. right? Okay. So, what is what is it that we were trying to compute? We were trying to compute the response of the LC filter to a step in the duty cycle, right? That is how we started. We had a step in the duty cycle, duty cycle changed from 0 to alpha naught and we wanted to see what it is. Now, it turns out that uh, it is a reasonable approximation to simply compute the step response of the LC filter. Okay and that itself will be the step response the response to a step in the duty cycle is this okay but uh, again be careful about this so
this is the waveform generator and this is alpha. Now, let us say alpha goes from 0 to some value. Okay. So, this is a step in alpha. Now, what we are saying is this V naught in response to the step is approximately the same as what? What is the input I should apply to? This one what is the input I should apply here? It is a step of alpha times V s. Okay. So, the important thing is this V s here the battery voltage comes as a multiplier okay. because what we are trying to find is the transfer function between alpha and V naught. Okay. So, we will find the transfer function of this circuit which we already found it is a linear time invariant circuit. Okay. Any questions? the same as the response of the linear time invariant L c low pass filter. To a step alpha naught V s step input alpha naught times V s. Okay. So, what will be the transfer function? What I want is the output divided by alpha. What will this be? Please tell me the transfer function.
do you get? What's the answer? Yeah. I think you had already evaluated the transfer function of this circuit. Okay. What was this? Yeah, so if I write it like this, it will be S square LC plus SL by RL plus 1. Okay. So, this is all that is there. The only thing is that now this V x itself is what should be substituted by alpha s times V s. Okay. So, when we want the transfer function V naught of s by alpha, okay. so this V s appears as a scaling factor right so that's all i wanted to highlight here okay now this makes sense first of all uh, if you simply look at the transfer function v naught divided by alpha v naught is a voltage alpha is dimensionless so whatever answer you get should have the dimensions of voltage okay so that appears to be fine and this uh, scaling with vs also makes sense because so, let us say V s is 5 volts and you change the duty cycle by 10 percent. Okay. So, the extra stuff that you get is 5 volt pulses. Okay. On the other hand, if V s is 10 volts, the same change in duty cycle will give you 10 volt pulses. It is like doubling the input. So, V s appears as a gain multiplier. Is this okay? So, this is I mean this can be a little bit confusing because obviously, you are used to transfer functions which depend only on the component values not on some voltage somewhere, but here we are looking at the transfer function from the duty cycle of the switching waveform to the output. So, uh, the voltage that is being switched V s appears as a multiplier. So, that is why I went a little slowly please think about it, it makes perfect sense, but uh, we are looking at the transfer function from the duty cycle to the output, because the duty cycle is what we will control right finally. And while going from uh, the output voltage to the duty cycle, that will have a transfer function of what dimensions? What should it be? It should have some somewhere it should have 1 divided by voltage. Okay. That voltage will uh, cancel this, so that the loop gain will be dimensionless always. Okay. Because you break the loop and at some point you create a disturbance and you see at the same point what comes back. So, that has to have the same dimension. So, here the part of the circuit for which we have calculated the transfer function has dimensions of uh, voltage and the controller which takes you back from the output voltage to the duty cycle will have the inverse dimension maybe some other voltage will come into play but so the uh, and this can have practical consequences also so you now you can clearly see that the loop gain can depend on the battery voltage. Okay. So, it is possible that what is stable for a particular battery voltage will not be stable for some other battery voltage. You understand? Because imagine, I mean you had the usual nice response with uh, dominant pole roll off and then all the non dominant stuff coming well after the unity gain frequency. You operate the same DC DC converter with a higher voltage V s, what happens? The whole thing will get lifted up. Okay. So, who knows now the non dominant poles may come within the unity loop gain frequency. Okay. So, that is the practical consequence of it. Any questions? Okay. If frequency of alpha s is? Yeah. So, now we will see actually what the frequency of alpha s will be. It is true if you go on changing alpha rapidly that is very cycle to the next you go on changing it uh, the assumption we made may not hold true. Although that assumption is still ok, because that assumption was based on the impulse response of this being much slower than the period. So, if you keep the period constant and you go on changing alpha. Okay. So, that assumption that we made that we can look at the average value within each period and take that to be the output that is fine, 
but it turns out after we evaluate the loop gain and stability you will see that alpha cannot vary very rapidly okay for stability reasons is it okay so we will uh, complete this but essentially what we now need is the transfer function between this v naught and the controller because whatever transfer function we have calculated now plus the i mean times that will be the loop gain okay so just uh, very quickly if you plot the bode plot of uh, v naught by alpha what will the magnitude and phase look like what will be the magnitude v s and then at uh, low frequencies it will be v s and what happens yeah so let us say there is a peaking and then finally it is minus 40 dB per decade and what will be the phase I think we drew the Bode plot of the second order response earlier right in some earlier class now tell me what is the phase in fact scaling does not affect the phase so what happens to the phase it will be 0 at low frequencies and then minus pi at very high frequencies and somewhere here at omega n it will be minus pi by 2 and I also told you that the larger the quality factor or the lower the damping factor this will be steeper okay I think I mentioned that is not it. So, if you have a higher quality factor system it will uh, switch more rapidly okay and if the quality factor is infinity the phase will be a step okay. So, now just looking at this you can have any controller that you want, but uh, yeah first of all what kind of controller will you have, what will you have in the controller. What kind of transfer function should the controller have, remember this is just part of the loop gain, how many poles are here, huh? 2, how many, 2, there are 2 poles already in this part of the response the rest of it should be such that we have enough phase margin. So, what should we do? Where will the unity loop gain frequency be in this? Where should we? I mean what should be the what should be in the controller and so on? It should be why? Before omega n. The third possible answer is on top of omega n. What happens if you put it after omega n? Is that a reasonable choice looking at this plots? Why not? What is the problem? The phase is already like minus 180 degrees, right? You do not want the unity because whatever else you add, it will probably add some more phase lag and make it unstable. So, the only possibility, I mean, with this, with the kind of controllers that we know and so on, is to have the unity loop gain frequency well below omega n so that this part of the circuit that is from alpha to v naught does not provide too much phase lag the controller will do whatever it is supposed to do and then uh, fix it okay. Yeah it is possible uh, right now again if we have time later we will discuss adding zeros to the loop gain to improve it, but one thing you have to realize is you will never be able to add a 0 by itself it also has to have a pole okay because you will never get a transfer function of uh, this type this is physically unreali unrealizable because the gain of this goes on increasing at an infinite frequency it has an infinite gain this kind of thing is not possible everything that you make will eventually have an eventual low pass behavior okay so we will first consider the simple controller at least you know that somehow if you place the unity gain uh, unity loop gain frequency here this part of the circuit has negligible effect and you can reasonably make it stable is that okay so, the things that we have looked at are I would say not very different okay we had we ha now have to deal with a second order uh, system which whose damping factor may not be very large okay. In fact, this is almost certainly going to have peaking 
okay it depends very much on rl but it can have peaking okay and the other thing is to kind of extend our definition of transfer functions to let's say from duty cycle to the output now there is a number of approximations we made like averaging within a period and so on but that is okay those are actually good approximations because in any dc dc converter for reasonable operation we have to keep the switching frequency to be much higher than the natural frequency but the more uh, significant thing uh, which is also something that we were not used to before is that the loop gain depends on some voltage somewhere okay so the voltage levels can affect stability right if you make a dc dc converter for uh, 5 volt inputs and then let's say hey i already have this and i'll make it uh, i'll use the same thing for 20 volt battery that will not work okay okay think about these things we'll continue from this and then see how to make the controller in the next class <laughs>